Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're looking at the final keyword. This will be an interesting one. Also, if you're new here, my name is Alex Lee. On this channel, I make a Java tutorial just like this one every single week. So if you're new here, and you might be interested in that, then consider subscribing. So we're in Eclipse. Let's just make a new Java project. We'll call it like final keyword fun. That's fun at the end because we want to have fun here. New class, call it final and hit the main method. The final keyword means final value. What it's set to is the final value that it's gonna be. It's not gonna change anywhere. You can't change this variable. It's final, it's done, it can't change. You can throw the final keyword in front of a class, a variable, or a method. So I'm gonna show you an example of each of those. How's that sound? We've got our class here, which is a blueprint for an object, and it has the main method, which is gonna help us run some code. We're gonna start with final variables, then go to final methods, and then final classes. Usually for final variables, they go up here. This is what the class knows that's gonna stay constant, that's never gonna change. Also known as global variables. Global variables use the final keyword. For example, we could have like a max value, final int max equals five. We could also have a min value, min equals zero. It can also be static, static final double pi, we could have pi in here if we wanted, 3.14159. Let's print out those examples by creating a final class, final f equals new final, doing f dot max, print that out. We'll see that f dot max is equal to five. I'll delete the other two to avoid confusion. <coughs> You can also have a blank final like this, but you have to initialize it. So what you would do here is if for some reason your requirements or your assignment was to have a final that wasn't initialized, which usually doesn't happen, but you would just throw it in a constructor and you'd say max equals five. So that way, when you create an object here, final, is the constructor. So it runs code inside the constructor. And now we're setting max to five. So if we save and run this, we get five and the error goes away because we're initializing it in the constructor. But usually that doesn't happen. Usually you'll just set it all at once up here. But I just wanted to let you know that you can do that. The only difference between a normal variable and a final variable is that you can't, you can't change the final variable. If we had a method here called change max and passed in a new max value, we'll call it new max. And then somehow we wanted to do max equals new max. We can't do that because it's final, we can't change it. But if this was a regular variable, then we could. It's gonna control Z this. The reason these are capital is because it's good practice to have final variables capital so that you don't confuse them with regular variables. So when you try to reassign a variable and it's in all caps, you're like, oh, that's actually final, so I can't change it. So it's just better to kind of separate the variable names by putting finals as capitals. So that's final variables in a nutshell. Let's do a final method. Make a regular method, public void, say hi. I really like these say hi methods I've been doing lately, just because they're so simple. Hi. Now let's use it, f dot, say hi. It actually doesn't need to be in a print statement anymore. Hi. Now let's change that to final. Let's put a final keyword in front and see what happens. Save and run, and it does the same thing. That's because we're not technically changing the method, so it works fine. But if we had another class that tried to change that method, we can't, because final is final, that's it, you can't change it, that's the final form. Here's an example. Public class, other class, extends final. Delete that public so that we can put it in the same file. This could also be implements because extends and implements 
takes the methods from the class above it. Let's make it here. Public void say hi. Print. What if we print hello? Hello. We get a red underline because you cannot override the final method from final. So that's an example of a final method. You just can't change a final method or a final anything. So now let's go on to a final class. By the way, this is stuff that would have confused me so much in my courses. I swear, I didn't know what the final keyword really was until like a few months ago. And I graduated a year and a half ago. That's how bad the computer science education industry is. They just gotta teach it simply the first time. I don't know, it's a rant. Let's make a final class now. Remember, final means it's the final form, it can't change. So if we had final public class final, and we wanted to make another class, other class and have it extend final like before, we actually can't do that. Because now, since we use extends, extends means inherits, which means other class is now a subclass of final. And since this one's final, it's technically making a new version of it. So we can't do that. And the error, move, the error message here says, type other class cannot subclass the final class. So the moral of the story is, you can't change anything with the final keyword in front of it. You can't change variables, you can't change methods, and you can't even make subclasses. And that's really it. I don't wanna go into more details because this is really this is really all you need to know. You can also have final variables inside of other methods. So final int i equals zero. But then if you tried to set i equal to something else, it works exactly the same. You can't change a final variable. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. I hope this was helpful. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.